أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليسم صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify him and we give thanks to him for his boons and favors that he has bestowed upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadallah. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Quran with regards to the month of Ramadan. He says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed. Hudal linnas, as a guidance for humanity, as a guidance for all of us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he continues and he says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْ And he who is present, he who witnesses this month, it is incumbent upon him to fast. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, insha'Allah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us life, we will experience in a few days a blessed month, a special month. A month in which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made preparation for it. For it is said that he used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, requesting the opportunity to be able to witness this month. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray in the month of Rajab. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. O Allah, bless us in the month of Rajab and in the month of Sha'ban, the month in which we are presently in. Wabalighna Ramadan and give us the opportunity to witness the blessed month of Ramadan. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he prayed for this month, the month of Ramadan, and to be able to witness it. Because there are so many special things about Ramadan. It is reported that in the Friday preceding the month of Ramadan, that the Prophet wasallam he addressed the people. And he reminded them about the bounties, the blessings, and favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows in the month of Ramadan. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reminded his companions 
that this month, it is, he, he used to say to them, you will be witnessing a blessed month. A month in which there is a night that is better than 1,000 months. Laylatul Qad. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is the month of patience. And the reward for patience, for sabr, it is Jannah, paradise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he told his companions, what makes it special? That every good deed that you do in this month of Ramadan, it is equivalent to a fard deed done in months other than Ramadan or in times other than in the month of Ramadan. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and for every Fard, a compulsory deed that you do in the month of Ramadan, you get the reward of 70 compulsory deeds done in a month other than in the month of Ramadan. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he encouraged his companions to do many things in the month of Ramadan. He says, that this is the month of Rahmah. This is the month of forgiveness. This is the month in which if you act in the right way, then you can be forgiven your sins and that you can be saved from the fire of hell. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith, Man sama yawman, في سبيل الله عز وجل زحزح الله وجهه من النار بذلك بذلك اليوم سبعين خريفة أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said He who fast one day for the pleasure of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will free him from the fire of hell. Seventy autumn seasons for the one day that he has fasted for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, what makes Ramadan special? And why is it that Muslims make so much preparation for this great blessed month? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Ramadan is the month of the Quran. When man was in a state of darkness, when man did not understand right from wrong, when mankind was involved in all the evils of society, the Quran came to them and came in the month of Ramadan. And through application of this book, their lives were changed completely. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are reminded that this is the month of the Qur'an. And the Qur'an, this book, when we read it, we receive blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he says to us that for every letter that you read, you get ten blessings. And he, he emphasized that I do not mean that Alif Lam Mim you will get ten, but for Alif there will be ten blessings, and for Lam there will be ten blessings, and for Mim there will be ten blessings. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, in the listening to the Quran, we receive tremendous blessings also. 
because we are told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَانْسِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ And when the Qur'an is being recited, listen to it, remain silent so that you may have the mercy, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all need the rahmah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, in the month of Ramadan, we are encouraged to recite, to listen, to ponder, to implement the Quran within our lives. It is said that great scholars such as Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, that these individuals during the month of Ramadan they concentrated on the teachings of the Qur'an and they were not so much involved in the, what they used to do on an everyday basis of talking about the ahadith or the traditions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa They reminded people of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the importance for them to practice the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within their lives. And this is the importance that we ought to give to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glorious Qur'an during the month of Ramadan. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, what is it that makes Ramadan special? Ramadan is special because it is the month of forgiveness. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمْ خَطَّى وَخَيْرَ الْخَطَّائِينَ التَّوَّابُونَ Every son of Adam makes mistakes, every one of us. And the best of those who make mistakes are the ones who turn to Allah and they seek forgiveness for their mistakes. And so Ramadan is that month in which we are given many opportunities to seek forgiveness for our mistakes. Ramadan is the month in which we fast 29 or 30 days. And what does the fasting do for us? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Man sama Ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. He who fasts Ramadan with faith, with iman, and with expectation of rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his previous sins will be forgiven. And so the fasting of Ramadan, it brings us forgiveness for our sins. And so we need to do it sincerely. And we need to fast for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, that there are many people who will fast during the month of Ramadan and they will get nothing from their fasting except hunger and thirst. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, مَنْ لَمْ يَدَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلْ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً أَنْ يَدَ طَعَامَهُ وَلَا شَرَابَ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم he who does not give up forged speech, evil speech, and evil actions, acting upon the speech that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need for him to give up his food and for him to give up, give up his drink. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Ramadan is that month in which we stand night after night in voluntary prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, optional prayers, tarawih prayers, tahajjud. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ He who stands the nights of Ramadan, 
with faith, with iman, and with the expectation of rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his previous sins will be forgiven. And so when we observe the, the prayers in the month of Ramadan, when we stand for nights, up, nights, and nights upon nights, long nights, and we observe our prayers for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are being promised forgiveness for our sins. That's what makes Ramadan special, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Again, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he talks about the concept of forgiveness during the month of Ramadan, and he says, Man qama laylatal qad, imanan wa ahtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. He who stands the night of power, laylatul qad, with iman and with expectation of rewards, that Allah will forgive him his previous sins. And so this special night in this special month, it is a night in which we look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for our sins. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, yet again we are told about our charitable deeds in the month of Ramadan and how these, these deeds, they bring us forgiveness for our sins. For Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he spoke about the special things about this month, he advised his companions that they should help the fasting one to break his fast, provide iftar for those who are fasting. And he says that for providing iftar, you will have forgiveness for your sins, that you will have paradise, and that you will be saved from the fire of hell. And thirdly, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that you will have reward equal to the reward of the fasting person without diminishing or taking away anything from his rewards. And so in, in helping the fasting one to break his fast, you provide iftar for the fasting one, you have forgiveness for your sins. And the companions, they were poor people. So many of them were poor people. So they said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet of Allah, we are poor and we do not have for our own selves. And he said that even if you give the fasting one a date or a milk, a sip of water or milk, it would have sufficed that you will have forgiveness for your sins and that you will be saved from the fire of hell and that you will have rewards equal to the rewards of the fasting one without taking away anything from him. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, fasting in the month of Ramadan, it brings us tremendous blessings. There, there are, if we look at it, there are social blessings, there are healthy blessings or reasons for, in terms of fasting, there are spiritual benefits, there are social benefits, and there are health benefits from fasting during the month of Ramadan. But we know as Muslims that the best of benefits from this month is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, when he addresses the believers and he gives the illa or the reason for the fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, fasting, O you who believe, fasting is prescribed unto you 
as it was prescribed unto those before you, so that you may achieve taqwa, the spiritual benefit, so that you may become God-fearing people, so that you may understand what is right and practice it, and that you may understand what is wrong and that you may keep away from it. This is indeed the blessing or the benefit, the spiritual benefit of fasting during the month of Ramadan. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, As-siyamu jannah min an nar Fasting is a shield from the fire of hell. Kajunnati ahadikum min al-qital. Just like the shield of any one of you in a battlefield. You know, we have seen people in previous times when they fought in their battles, they had their swords in one hand and their shield in the other hand. And the shield, as they were fighting, would help to protect them from their enemies. And so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that fasting is a shield that protects you from the fire of hell. Because when one is fasting, his focus is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When one is fasting, he makes sure that everything is done for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why one of the great imams, Imam Ghazali, in his book, Ihya Ulum din in his book about the religious teachings, the book of religious teachings, he talks about the inner dimensions of fasting. And he says that there are three grades of fasting. The ordinary grade, where people fast by just abstaining from food and drink and sexual intercourse during the daytime in the month of Ramadan. And then he says that there is the special grade. And this is when the ears and the eyes and the tongues and the hands and the feet and other parts of the body, they fast by abstaining from everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared as being unlawful. And then he says that there is the extra special grade, the extra special people, those people who fast with their hearts, the fasting of the heart from unworthy concerns and worldly thoughts that they fast in total disregard of everything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They see not that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They speak no evil. They hear no evil. They do no evil. And they avoid everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared as being unlawful. And at the end of the day, this, the people in this extra special grade, they are in fear and hope. They are hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted their fast and that he will reward them for it. And they are fearing that they have made mistakes and they have done wrong and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
will certainly punish them for it. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, so fasting, it helps us to achieve taqwa. And fasting, it protects us from wrongdoing. And CM, it gives us that special privilege that on the day of judgment, we will be asked or requested to enter through a special door, a special gate. No one else will be allowed to enter that gate except those who have fasted during the month of Ramadan, Arayan, the gate of Arayan. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, in this special month, the month of fasting, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, inna lissa'imi inda fitrihi da'watan la turad. In this month, when the fasting one breaks his fast and he makes supplication, that his supplication is not returned unanswered. And so we are encouraged to make supplication continuously during the month of Ramadan, especially the time when we are fasting or breaking of the fast. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he talks about the breath of the fasting one. And he says, by the one in whose hand is my soul, the breath of the fasting person is more fragrant before Allah than the fragrance of musk. The sweetest thing that we can smell is musk. And here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam swears by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he says that the breath of the fasting one, it is sweeter than musk in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are told that Ramadan to Ramadan, it is kafara, it is expiation for sins that have been committed between the two Ramadan. Look at how special Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this month. That that which we have committed the wrongdoings, one Ramadan to another Ramadan, between the two, it is expiation for those wrongdoings, the sins that we have committed during the months following and leading up to the next Ramadan. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, even in our eating, in the morning, in the month of Ramadan, at the time of Sahur, we are told in it is barakah, in it is blessing. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Tasaharu fa inna fi suhuri barakah, or barakah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, eat or have that morning meal, for verily in it, is barakah and it is blessing. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, you know, on the day of judgment, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be allowed to intercede on our behalf, on behalf of his ummah, those people who live their lives in submission to the laws of Allah and to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But here, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, As-siyam wal-qiyam yashfa'an lil-abdi yawm al-qiyama. The fasting and your standing during the month of Ramadan, it will intercede for you on the day of judgment. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed the fasting because Allah says that this fasting has prevented, or the fasting will say on the day of judgment, I have prevented him from eating and drinking. I have prevented him from his desires. So let me intercede on his behalf. And then it will be said about the Qiyam. And when we stand, we are standing with the Qur'an. So the Qur'an is saying, I prevented him from his sleep and from his rest during the night. So let me intercede on his behalf. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, these are some of the special things about the month of Ramadan. And so that is why Muslims throughout the world, they look forward for this great month, this blessed month, year after year. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, that Allah says in Hadith Al-Qudsi, that every action of Ibn Adam, every action of the son of Adam, it is for him, except Siyam. That fasting, it is for me, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I will reward for it, or I will reward him for it. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the opportunity to witness the month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to guide us, and to give us that the, the, the opportunity to observe the month as it ought to be observed, the way it was observed by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. You know, very often, Ramadan becomes a month of luxury. And Ramadan is a month and sometimes where we eat more and drink more than we would do in other months. And Ramadan is that month in which sometimes we want the best, the things that we would not have, you know, entertained out of Ramadan, we want to entertain in the month of Ramadan. And sometimes we lose the real purpose and the real benefits and the significance of the month of Ramadan. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us try to practice that which was done by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions so that we will earn for ourselves the true benefits of the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May he give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of hellfire. Akulu kawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum. Wa li sa'ir al-mu'min minat min kulli zambin wa atubu ilayh. Innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Ridwanullahi alayhim ila yawmiddin. Amma ba'd. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, in observing Ramadan, I, I want to remind you and remind myself that uh, we must refrain from idle talks. We must refrain from harming people. We must refrain from saying that which will nullify our fasting during the month of Ramadan. And I say this because so often we engage ourselves in matters that really do not concern us. And so often we engage ourselves in talking about other things other than making sure that we, our tongues are really remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, 
Imam Ghazali, he spoke again in his book, Quickening the Religious Sciences. He spoke about runations of the tongue. And Imam, Imam Ghazali mentioned many things. I'll just mention a few that we should be or stay away from. He says that we should not speak in matters that do not concern us. That we should avoid lewd, insulting, or crude speech. That we should avoid excessive joking. That we should avoid sarcasm and ridicule. We should avoid false promises, lying and false oaths, backbiting and slandering, being two-faced. We say one thing to this one and then we go to say another thing to another one just because we, lo we want to be liked or to be loved by everyone. And that we should not instigate tense relations between people. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, once Omar ibn al-Khattab, he saw Abu Bakr. And he saw Abu Bakr grabbing hold of his tongue. And he wanted to know why he was doing this. He says to him, why are you grabbing hold of your tongue? And Abu Bakr said to him, this tongue has done me great harm. And so I am cautioning my tongue. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, another great companion, he says that if there is any limb of the body that should be imprisoned, it should be the tongue. When we commit wrongs in our society, if you steal, you kill, you are being imprisoned because of the wrongs that you have done, your hands, your feet, or your tongues, or any part of the body. And so he says, Abdullah ibn Masood, that if there is anything to be imprisoned, it should be the tongue, because the tongue does so, so much harm to others. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, as we await the month of Ramadan, let us strive to make some plans as to what we will do. And I encourage you, as I encourage myself, let us be observant of the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us plan to read more Quran. Let us plan to implement more Quran within our lives. Let us plan to be more generous because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was very generous. But in the month of Ramadan, he demonstrated generosity to the highest extent. And so maybe we can plan to give a dollar a day in the month of Ramadan. Let us plan to do more good deeds in the month of Ramadan. Perhaps we can help to clean up our neighborhoods. Because Ramadan, it teaches all about being pure people. We want to purify ourselves. And so there are many things that we can do in the month of Ramadan, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Let us write them down and make that full commitment that inshallah, when the month of Ramadan comes, that we will strive to implement the few things that we have decided to do in the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity to witness Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make Ramadan easy upon us and not difficult upon us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his continued guidance during the glorious month of Ramadan.
لقد امرنا الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران العظيم حيث قال ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وارضى الله من خلفائه الاربع ابي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي ونسته الباقين المبشرين بالجنه ونسائر الصحابه ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان الى يوم الدين اللهم عز اسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الايمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الاسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يذكركم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله لا نعمه واشكروه على الائه ولا ذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اقيم الصلاه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر ان الانسان لفي خسر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر